Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Palm Sunday and the beginning of Holy Week. We're coming to you from Louisville, Mississippi. My name is Reverend Keith Williams, and I am the pastor of three local churches in Winston County, Mississippi, uh, Flower Ridge, Campground, and Rocky Hill Churches, collectively known as the South Louisville Charge of the United Methodist Church. Again, for obvious reasons concerning the COVID-19 pandemic, we have suspended regular worship services. This video is our second release on YouTube. Uh, I know all of us have been hoping for life to, to return to normal. Uh, I think many, if not most of us, now realize that things are not going to be normal for quite some time. In fact, even as I sit here, our governor, Tate Reeves, has issued a shelter-in-place order that begins Friday evening, April 3rd. In essence, stay home. Avoid large crowds. Wash your hands. And best you can, especially in public, keep your hands away from your face. I have trouble with that one. I do. I think all of us church folks have been hoping against hope that we would be able to return to regular worship by Easter Sunday morning, uh, but that's not going to happen. Our churches on the South Louisville Charge had actually been planning a drive-in uh, movie-style worship event for Easter, you know, show up in your car, stay in your car, and that kind of thing. Uh, but as I've already stated, a shelter in order uh, essentially means stay at home. However, we've just got to do something special for Easter Sunday. So, y'all find us on YouTube for our Easter service next week. Our plans. We're going to be coming to you from Rocky Hill Church. We're hoping to release an Easter sunrise service so, y'all tune in uh, as we celebrate the Prime Christian Festival Day, Easter 2020. Out here in South Louisville, we definitely believe in the power of prayer. All three churches keep a very active and ongoing prayer list. On your YouTube page, we will be opening up for comments. Now, of course, you can make a regular everyday comment if you want, but our main reason for opening uh, comments is so that you can leave prayer requests. Just realize that any information and details that you share will be shared pretty much with the world. Again, we continue to gather names and we'll update our physical list uh, as soon as the situation allows let me say this again. If you have needs or are aware of someone in need, please contact me or one of our members through the normal channels of communication. The telephone number for the Louisville South Charge is 662-773-6910, and you can leave a message. So, on the subject of prayer, we are a praying people. As I said earlier, we believe in the power of prayer. It is our faith, it is our experience that prayer works. Again, we pray for our people. We pray for those who are on our prayer list, praying for our community, our state, our nation, as a pandemic, in fact, we pray for the whole world. I invite you now to bow in reverence as we celebrate this most significant time in the life of Christ as we begin Holy Week and the Passion of Jesus Christ. Please join me now in prayer, and in conclusion, join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your Son. Father, we gather in his name, Jesus, 
This is that most significant and important time of the year that we celebrate right now. We celebrate just how much you really love us. That your allowing will would let the events of Holy Week even take place. That the only begotten Son of God would, would become the sacrificial lamb. The Lamb of God who takes away our sin. Forgives us. Stands us back on our feet. And sends us forth as disciples of Christ. To share his reconciling love. Father, through your Son. We are forgiven. Lord, as we once again have the privilege to experience the week of the year that we call holy. In short, as we remember all the things Jesus suffered so that we might have life and the promise of life eternal. Father, we pray for resolve in this present crisis. We pray for the sick. We pray for our doctors and our nurses at the front of this viral war. We pray for the leadership of our world at all levels. As citizens of this great nation in the state of Mississippi, we pray for our local community. We pray a special blessing for our national, our state, and our local governments. Father, hear our prayers. Prepare our hearts and minds as we once again experience Holy Week. Every day of this week has a profound significance in the life of Christ. By the time we reach the end of this week, we will have arrived at Holy Thursday. We call it Monday Thursday from a word that means mandate. Do this in remembrance of me. The evening of the Last Supper. On Good Friday, we arrive at the celebration of the day that the Good Shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. What did Jesus say? No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Father, thank you for your son. We're on our way to Easter. Again, bless us in these unusual times as we seek to do your will. Bless those we name in our hearts. Guide and sustain us. In these trying times, all these things we lift to you in the holy and blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Father, we once again unite our voices in prayer. His prayer taught to all disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So, most of us are sitting at home. We are sheltering in place. How would you like to go to a parade? A parade with a meaning. Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, our Palm Sunday Scripture. This is chapter 21, and we will be reading verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 21, verses 11. 1 through 11. Palm Sunday. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus 
sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken to the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. And he sat on them. A very large crowd split, spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. As we say again, the word of God for the people of God. Every Palm Sunday, if we're looking close, a model for living every day of our life is played out before us. It's a parade with a meaning. And like most parades, like, I don't know, the ones all of us have been to, you've been to a parade before, there's noise from the crowd. There are occasional loud shouts that be, can be heard above everything else. There's shouts of joy, shouts of celebration that give meaning to the festivities. Things like Hosanna, if you're on the streets of Jerusalem on this particular Passover. Things like, I don't know, uh, what's the last parade you've been to? Things like Merry Christmas. If you're on Main Street anywhere in the United States, especially in the South, somewhere around the middle of December, it's a parade with a meaning. And again, like, like most parades, the participants ain't a-saying much. In fact, for the most part, nary a word is said. The meaning of of the parade has to do with what you're seeing, with what's being portrayed before you. The knowledge of your people's history and tradition that enables you to interpret the spectacle before you. So that the question becomes, how do we as Christians Living in our present society, how should we, how do we interpret the parade that is Palm Sunday? We are a society that seems to thrive on fame, and it seems to be getting worse. We seem to have a, uh, I don't know, an appetite, a craving for it. So that even what's supposed to be the regular old news, I don't know if you notice this, sometime lately, it now has sort of a, I don't know, sort of a Jerry Springer flavor, sort of a tabloid perspective, like the plain old news is not good enough anymore. And nowadays, a person can become famous for a multiplicity of unbelievable reasons. I mean, you know, not so long ago, a person had to make a life-changing discovery. You know, uh, I don't know, a Jonah Salk, a, a Louis Pasteur. You had to walk on the moon or something. But today, 
You can become famous for, uh, well, you tell me. Sky's the limit, huh? Anything from the horrendous to the plum sick, right? To the suit stupid to the to the silly. I mean, I've seen whole movies sort of based on the idea of putting some crazy person in a shopping cart and rolling them down a hill just to see what happens. Fame. But you know, it all becomes a meaningless honor when it only lasts for the proverbial 15 minutes of fame. Maybe that's why Jesus avoided it. Or at least we should say that he, he avoided it most of his life. But this final week of his life, the week we call holy, is different. While Jesus never sought honor, glory, or fame, his entrance into Jerusalem brought all three. And his response to that parade reveals much about his inner character, who Jesus Christ really was, who he really is. First, it shows us that his highest priority of life was to serve God and not seek fame and fortune. His parade of honor came at the end of his ministry. Until that first Palm Sunday when he rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, he had done pretty much everything he could to avoid having the crowd honor him as a king. In fact, he frequently told people, he healed uh, not to tell anyone. What I call the doctrine of shh, don't tell anybody. After feeding the 5,000, he had to quietly slip away because the crowd wanted to coronate him, make him king, make him king. When he approached a person, you know, possessed by demons, he silenced the demons before they revealed his identity. The Apostle Paul accurately summarized his action in a letter to the church in Philippi when he wrote, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself. So, while it's true that most of us won't seek the fame and fortune that we see reflected in our society in a lot of places, I think that each of us seeks fame in our own way. I mean, you know, each day we make choices on how we spend our time. We make decisions that reflect our priorities. Do those choices reflect a desire to serve or to be served? Do those choices reflect a desire to give or to receive. Is our first priority in life the advancement of God's kingdom? Or our own personal self-indulgence? Jesus' highest priority was to serve God. And you and I, we, we know the rest of the story, don't we? Because this Parade has a meaning. We know it won't last. We know, we know how things are going to turn out by the end of the week. And so did he. 
which leads to another meaning to this parade. Jesus' entry into the city also shows his courage to withstand the pressure of the crowd to conform to their expectations. You know, we teach our children not to compromise the values that we as parents have taught them. With our young people today, I, I think we worry more than ever about a thing we call peer pressure. We tell them to have the courage to resist the pressure to conform. You, you don't have to go along with the crowd. But then, you know, ironically, we become completely distraught when they decide, our own children, to do something radically different from our own perspective on life. So I guess, you know, be careful what you teach your children. <laughs> it can turn on you. I think part of the meaning of today's Palm Sunday Parade has to do something with not conforming to those around you. You see, the crowd wanted Jesus to be the king that fit their own image. You know, one who would defend their bias, one who would campaign on behalf of their prejudices. But see, Jesus came as a king that called for their unswerving loyalty, their un, unreserved generosity, their uninhibited love, and their unconditional obedience. Jesus is Lord. But see, once the crowd discovered that their hmm, unofficially inaugurated king would not be serving them, they changed their shouts of acclamation to curses of denunciation from Hosanna in the highest, save us to the highest heaven, to by the time we get to the end of the same week, crucify him. The same crowd. So that there's meaning to this parade. Our Lord did not want to be the king of popular opinion. But had the courage to believe and fulfill that popular opinion should conform to his lordship. The day Jesus rode into Jerusalem revealed his highest priority to serve God. His courage not to conform to the expectations of others. And one final, though not exhaustive, consideration for the meaning of this Palm Sunday parade, his humility. You know, commentaries on Bibles and on Bible verses and passages and events in the Bible, sometimes they, they, don't, they don't always agree on the interpretation of a passage in Scripture. But, you know, few disagree on this point. There was once a day in the history of Israel that a donkey would carry a king. But the beast of burden would take the place of the larger, more powerful, more imposing war horse. You see, there's a, there's a different kind of meaning to this parade. Donkeys. You know about donkeys? <laughs> donkeys are slow. Donkeys sort of ply around. Donkeys have a mind of their own, that's for sure. Horses gallop with great speed, are well-trained. Uh, donkeys are sort of low to the ground. But the rider on the horseback towers above the crowd. Yeah, humility is a rare commodity in our society. More often than not, the victorious taunt. 
the arrogant strut. Intimidation and domination mark political conversations. Verb boast boasting, verb boast boasting, Mars, even religious programming as one preacher after another tries to garner a larger viewing audience with claims of miraculous healings or mystical encounters or charismatic experiences. See, look, look at the meaning of this donkey parade. And ask, have we replaced a sense of modesty, the subtle, the uh, understatement, with the audacious, the spectacular, and the egotistical traits never found in our Lord? Now, don't misunderstand. Humility is not denying who you are or your gifts and abilities. I mean, you know, Jesus was quite intentional the day he rode into Jerusalem. He gave specific instructions to his disciples. He was borrowing from Old Testament imagery. He, he, he wanted the people to, to see something familiar, something that they already knew about. The prophet Zechariah had foretold long ago that the Messiah, the anointed one of God, would come riding on a donkey into the city of Jerusalem. Well, Jesus was also borrowing on recent history. You know, we talk about recent events and how it affects us now. He did the, he did the same thing. Again, Jesus was very intentional. He knew the meaning his parade would create. In 175 BC, a Roman general was determined to silence Jewish nationalism by disgracing their religion. Now, among other things, and there was a whole bunch of things that this crazy Roman governor, uh, uh, Roman uh, military leader did, general. Among other things, at the temple site in Jerusalem, he sacrificed a pig to Zeus on the altar. He opened up the public brothels in the temple. Hmm. Several years later, several years later, see if you've heard of these folks. The Maccabees led an uprising and overthrew Roman rule, at least at that time, for just a few minutes. Hmm. On the day the Maccabees rode triumphantly into the city. Palm branches, same, same look, same thing. Palm branches and coats were spread on the road to welcome and honor the Maccabees. So that this story, this understanding would have been told and retold to subsequent generations and been permanently etched into their memories. The point Jesus knew how the people would interpret his actions. On this last week of his life, the last parade, he did not try to cancel his identity or conceal his mission. No. So, what is humility. Someone once wrote, let me, let, me, let me read you a quote. You ready? Humility is perfect quietness of heart. It is to have no trouble, never to be fretted or vexed or irritated or sore or disappointed. It is to expect nothing to wonder at nothing that is done to me. 
to feel nothing done against me. It is to, it is to be at rest when nobody praises me and when I am blamed or despised. It is to have a blessed home in the Lord where I can go and shut, go in and shut the door and kneel to my Father in secret and be at peace as in a deep sea of calmness when all around is trouble. It is the fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ's redemptive work on Calvary's cross, manifested in those of his own who are definitely subject to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Andrew Murray. Such was the attitude of our Lord. He entered the holy city at peace, knowing that soon the praises of the crowd would turn to shouts of condemnation. He did not become enamored in the adulation. He did not shrink from fulfilling his mission. Our Lord serves as a model of how we are to live each day of our life. We won't find fulfillment in this life unless our highest priority is serving our Lord. We, we won't be able to follow his calling unless we have the courage to sometimes stand against the crowd. And we cannot claim to be his disciples unless in our lives we seek to have the same humble attitude as his. Every year at this same, every year, every year, this same Palm Sunday donkey parade has meaning. Can we see it? More importantly, are you listening? Can we live it? Amen. I appreciate y'all tuning in today and be a part of this time together. Uh, we will see you next Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. Like I said, we hope to be bringing you a sunrise service as best we can. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank y'all for being a part of this day. Remember about your comments. Remember to leave your uh, prayer requests in the comments section, and we'll, we'll keep up that with over, over the weeks that we're not allowed to gather in church, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll make do. We're going to be all right, y'all. Blessings and uh, uh, farewell from the Louisville South Charge. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Father, our highest priority is to serve you. For people of faith, of all the things we do, our response and service to the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important thing. Father, in our faith, in our love, in all things, we seek the humility demonstrated by our Lord. We seek to be Christ-like in our ways through the uniqueness of who we are. For us, sharing Jesus Christ will always be the truth through personality. Father, you often put us in strange places, in unique circumstances. Our challenge is to respond to your love in those places. Father, dismiss us in your love. Set us free in Jesus' name. Bless us, Father, it's Holy Week, and we will arrive heart and soul on Easter Sunday as we celebrate life, and life resurrected. Until we meet again, all these things we pray 
in the blessed name of Jesus.